All right, so we are ready to get everything back assembled on this thing. Finally, it's uh, everything is done, pieced together, put back together, and uh, just everything is to spec. Everything is new, refreshed, the fresh 25 over bore with the piston, the factory piston here, the rings all new, everything is in there. Got a ring clip already set in there. The head is completely rebuilt, as you saw, with new valve springs, uh, relapped. Complete top end gasket. This top end gasket set here is from Honda OEM, and it's it's way cheaper than than piecing everything together or getting one of those other kits. I mean, it's got everything from all the O-rings for the boots, the two washers, the two copper washers that'll go here and here, all the head base and and uh, head gasket. So definitely definitely look at that if you're looking to do the top end, and even they sell a bottom end gasket set as a whole. Get that the new wrist pin, the two nuts for the clutch, and uh, everything else. But this is pretty much the full top end freshened up so we're going to start with putting the piston in and work our way over to the cylinder okay and when installing the piston c-clip just make sure that there is there's that cutout down there towards the bottom right right about there just make sure that your opening in the clip is not there i got mine positioned at 12 o'clock on both sides so just do that. And then what I was noticing about the gasket where it made it up back here. Oh, let's see if I can get a shot at it. Right there is that there was some sealant there connecting the two cases together. So I double checked to make sure if that needed some silicone or not silicone, but just sealant, the Yama bond. And Honda already did that for you, putting right there and right there. So that side's facing down. That is your base gasket. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. mount here. I go ahead and put the piston down into the block a little bit. Yeah, I know my hand's blocking the way. It's okay. We'll gap out the rings later. gasket try not to get the gasket hung up on the threads there I'm gonna slide that on make sure that your dowels are still in the holes there clean up your surfaces now we're ready for the cylinder And there is a fresh bore and hone. You can see the nice hone marks in there. And here is the sequence to your ring gap. Top ring to the, say, one, 130, 2 o'clock position, bottom ring, 10 o'clock, and then repeat with your bottom rings, just so everything is almost perfectly at a quarter spacing. Okay, so when you're setting that in there, I mean, there, there's no good way. I usually don't even film putting that in there just because I, I, I take a while doing it. It's simple as that. Um, just make sure that the in is pointed towards the intake and it's out. Uh, the rings, there's no good way to do them. I just, just try to do them the best way you can, set them all in there. I wish there was a simple rock method or, or like the, the razors go and, and the players, you can put the piston in the cylinder with the rings and then they have a little cutout on the cylinder so you can just slide in the wrist pin with them already seated out of the bike. It's a whole lot simpler than trying to make this thing level, sit down on there and just compress the rings by your fingers. My fingers are big so it just takes a little bit, no big deal. Everything is seated in there perfectly. Uh, it's It's got great gap to it. Like I said, you want your gaps pretty much at every corner of your studs here and then just put it in there. Uh, coat the cylinder with oil and now we can, I just started hand threaded the back two bolts back here. And then I'll torque those back down here in a little bit, but uh, I want to get everything buttoned up. So use 
that keep your dowels in the head and you can take them out really if you want it doesn't matter which way they go then okay so just torque down the head here these are at 35 foot pounds just the caps the acorn caps there and the nuts I did mine in a sequence of just one, two, three, four. I did it in three different steps. I did 12, 24, and then kept it off with the 35. This 12 millimeter bolt there, just get that snug, hand tight, not hand tight, I mean past hand tight, uh, and then those two back there. Just uh, tighten those up securely. Next we'll move on to the motor mount and to the head. I'm going to go ahead and put the rods in there. Then after you slide in your push rods there, like I said in the beginning there I marked which one was like this was one, two, or one, and then two, and marked the top of them so that everything is back in at the correct spot, or at least the original spot that it came out of. Let me just get, now when you put this on your valve cover here, you definitely got to make sure that you're rockers are not going to be binding up over each other until they fall down into place there. Okay, so just uh, put the valve cover back on. You just want to take a look in the back there that your your dowels fit into the push rods. And you can do that just when you put it on there. Just check your clearances on your valves there and your rocker arms. and. Um, there's no torque sequence anywhere to this head. There's no torque spec. So I just started from the inside and worked my way out multiple times until I just put, I mean, I don't even know what the, the torque spec would be. 9, 12, something like that. I don't want to tell you wrong. Don't do it. I do it by feel. Put it on there with a quarter inch wrench and just kind of get onto it. Um, put his new copper washers onto the do two bolts there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and adjust this valve real quick. The valve clearance needs to be six thousandths. Like I said, the exhaust here has got to be nine thousandths. So the first thing you want to do is come over here to your inspection hole right there. Take that plug out, and you want to line up the T with the little notch in the frame there. You'll see it. In, you'll see it in the hole there. Line that up, and if, I, if you got the front cover off, I'll show you what to look for also as far as timing and as you go to rotate it. So, so six thousandths. You want to put it in there. Slide it in and out until you don't have, you know, much much uh, resistance on your feeler gauge, and then tighten it back up. All right, so this is a little um, every which way you can figure out if you're on top dead center and on the compression stroke and within time. This is a little bit of everything. So. First thing you want to do, like I said, is take out the inspection hole right here. Oh, let's see if we can get some good light in there. Let's see how about this. Oh, geez. Well, anyways, there's a T right there, and you can see the little cutout or notch on the right side of the, that hole there. Line up that T, there's an F right below it, a T with a flat mark below it. Line up that T, or the flat mark below it, with that inspection hole. For timing, you wanna make sure that, once again, that little triangle in the frame, that, or in the uh, case there, is in line with the dot, and then in line with this pin, everything is, oh, let's see what if I can, everything is in line. And you're going to know if you're off by far because it, it's, I mean, one, one tooth off is going to throw it way out of whack. And then another way to make sure on the compression stroke is by checking both valves. You want them both to be loose. So look for that. If your exhaust or your intake is got pressure on it, you're 180 out. That's all the ways to do it there. Okay, now that our valves are all in spec, we can put on the 
valve caps here. These are the last new O-rings in the kit. We'll do a light layer of oil around the O-rings and these caps will get torqued down to nine foot-pounds. Just like that, the head is done. Other than putting in a new spark plug in, pretty soon we'll put on the throttle body and the air box and the exhaust, there's new exhaust. I'll show you what that one is here in a second. 